this will be a analysis of Gary Smith and his betrayal. I will start with Gary Smith himself as a character. Before I go into a story summary and cutscenes, the reason being is that some of the cutscenes later on will make more sense as a result. So first, a story summary for those who are interested. If you already know, or rather not hear the summary, I will put a timestamp up for you to skip this part. So the story begins with you, Jimmy Hopkins, being dropped off to a private school known as Bullworth Academy. You meet Gary Smith and Pete Kowalski, who both seem to be Jimmy's first friends there. Gary Smith tells you of the main cliques being the nerds, bullies, preps, greasers, and jocks. These cliques don't get along, and they usually fight each other. Gary wants to control all these major cliques, but Hopkins doesn't. After a few missions, Gary betrays you, and he sets up a fight between you and Russell, who is a buddy clique leader. Hopkins wins this fight, and so has control over the bully clique to an extent. So the rest of the story consists of chapters in which you subjugate the other cliques and beat their leaders, which leads you to becoming the leader of all the cliques. Gary then convinces another clique outside of the school, known as the Townies, to sabotage Jimmy by creating problems for the cliques, which leads to the cliques not respecting him anymore. Jimmy is also expelled from the school due to Gary Smith snitching on Jimmy and his general unpopularity with the students. Jimmy beats the Townie leader, whilst Gary Smith causes a riot in the school with the cliques attacking each other. Jimmy heads to a school with his allies, stops the fight, and faces off with Gary, who reveals he has now been using everyone from the start. Unfortunately, Gary says all of this within the earshot of the head principal, so when he gets beaten, Gary is expelled, and Jimmy becomes a student once again. This section will show what conditions Gary might have. Feel free to pause at any point if you want to read it. I'll just quickly go over it. Gary is described as a sociopath at many points. I looked at the sociopath symptoms and they do fit Gary as he seemed to be charismatic as well as lacking empathy for others and such. He may also be a narcissist as well as he feels he is superior to others. Also, quite a few characteristics of narcissism apply to his character too. These are likely part of his character. He may also suffer from paranoia as well. The cutscenes I'm about to show you generally will have some of these symptoms of sociopaths or narcissists in general, which can explain Gary's odd behaviour. Hey, you're the new kid. Yeah, what's it to you? Friendly, aren't you? Give me a break, loser. Hey, relax, friend. You're all pent up. Go easy or they put you on medication. They did to me. Boy, you nearly sent me insane. That's fascinating. Now if you'll excuse me. I said me. relax, friend. Get off, man. Listen to me, tough guy. You just arrived at the toughest school in the country, and I'm offering to be your friend. Trust me, in a place like this, you're going to need friends. So it's up to you. You're going to play nice or what? Yeah, sure. Good. So how about I show you around? Gary sees Jimmy Hopkins and he offers to be his friend. Gary shows that he takes medication for something which suggests that Gary himself is not a stable individual. He's also quite insistent on being Jimmy's friend as well. Hey, I've been expelled from anywhere halfway decent. Yeah, I've been expelled from anywhere halfway decent because I'm really bad. Give up the tough guy act, pal. Hey man, what's your problem? Well, ADD primarily, but also life. My parents, this school, Western civilization, but really, honestly, enough about me. Oh! Gary tells Jimmy that he has ADD. He makes fun of Jimmy and antagonizes him. He also makes fun of Pete as well, which is something he repeats quite a few times. Shortly after, Gary Smith introduces Jimmy to the main cliques. Come on, let's go. So that's a good idea, right? Yeah, okay, <laughs> alright, sure, I'll do it. <sighs> Hey man, what's going on? Not much. I was just telling Petey here about my idea to take over the school. I mean, my plan for us to take over the school. What plan? Don't worry, Jimmy. It's just a little something I came up with. Here is when the betrayal aspects start to ramp up. So he mentions that he has a plan for him to solely take over the school before he realizes what he said and corrects himself. He also doesn't want to reveal his plan to take over the school, which shows that he doesn't trust Jimmy. It's sink or swim, my friend. And if you're good at swimming, you gotta let the losers drown. It's sink or swim. 
sink meaning to fail, whereas swim means to succeed. Then he says, if you're good at swimming, you have to let the losers drown. He's suggesting that Jimmy and Pete are the losers, and so they will fail, whereas he himself is the one who's good at swimming, and so will succeed. Why don't you guys leave the thinking up to me? What? 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 What the? Can't you say anything else? <laughs> you know what, Petey? You were right. Jimmy is pretty dumb. What'd you say about me? Whoa, nothing. No, no, no. All I said was that you had to be pretty dumb to get expelled from so many schools, that's all. <laughs> Relax, James. All he said was that you must be dumb. Or maybe you're all messed up because you came from a broken home. What'd you say about me, dwarf? Jimmy has not fully processed or realized what Gary has said yet. And so Gary decides to shift the focus by first insulting Jimmy and then telling him about what Peter said. Then near the end of the cutscene, Gary mentions that nothing escapes his focus, which means he keeps an eye on everything. And this shows that he's quite observant. Don't worry, friend. Nothing escapes my notice. I hear everything. You and me, we can do things. Then in this cutscene, Algy mentions that Gary's a sociopath. This shows that Gary is already known for this trait, as other people are referring to him as such. Just that you're friends with that sociopath Gary. Socio what? Sociopath, it means... Never mind. Forget I said anything. Another case of Gary bullying Pete. Jimmy tells Gary to knock it off. Jimmy? Just knock it off, Gary. You're out of line. He also gets up and close to Jimmy, and from what he says and how he acts, it suggests that he's quite offended. Boring. Boring? I'm boring. You're none too interesting yourself, friend. <laughs> Look. Then he makes an apology that he doesn't mean. This is shown by how he smirks and does a little laugh before saying he's sorry. This is also proven not to be a real apology anyway, as he continues to mock both Jimmy and Pete. So this is another cutscene in which he mocks Pete again. Gary sends Jimmy to deal with the bullies, which means that the buddy clique will view Jimmy negatively. Gary doesn't get involved, so he remains a neutral party. Gary then again states his goal of taking over the school, which Jimmy is not interested in. Well, I think the bullies might have gotten him. Please, I'll pay! I say do it. It's a good chance to show Russell who's in charge around here. Now run along, P-Stain, before you mark the carpet. Yes. We've got to take care of Russell and his boys. Then, after that, take care of all the other cliques. Soon, this school will be ours. I don't want the school. Yeah, well, I do, pal, and I intend to get it. Now go help that door. And what are you going to do? I've got planning to do. <laughs> there you are. Come on, I found something incredible. Hold on. Relax, man. I can't keep getting in trouble. I can't get expelled again. It's always about me with you. Me, me, me. I'm thinking bigger picture. And you're worrying about getting into trouble? You know what? You really are something. What bigger picture? I'm, uh, we are gonna take over this school. We are not taking over anything right now. Gary is seen as being restless here. This could be seen as a symptom of his ADD, in which he could be restless or fidgety. Jimmy shows concern for his status as a student as he doesn't want to be expelled, yet Gary doesn't care for this and disrespects Jimmy. He then does another slip up when he first says I, but then he changes it to us. This slip up, again, shows us that he's intending to rule the school, but without Jimmy. Time and tide wait for no man, my friend. But it seems they do wait for a wannabe tough guy who's nothing but a little girl. You're full of it. Then Gary says time and tide wait for no man. What this means is, if you look at time, and if you look at the tide of the sea, both things will go on no matter what you do. So Gary is saying, essentially, we need to stop wasting time and take advantage of this situation or we can lose out. Gary is very keen on convincing Jimmy to go with him to a certain location. So you keep telling me, look, now come on, I promise you, after this, things are never going to be the same again. Oh, I'm so excited! I should have stopped taking those pills ages ago. Yeah, right. What we then see Gary state that he's so excited and he should have stopped taking those pills ages ago. 
These pills were likely for his ADD, and so the player knows that Gary may be a bit different. Another thing which may or may not be coincidental is, if you look at this camera shot, it's from a low angle, and generally, a low angle camera shot like this shows that the person is in a powerful position as they're above you. So this may be coincidental, or it may not, but it suggests that Gary has some form of power. So, Jimmy boy, here we are, the hole. The place where this school separates the men from the boys, the wheat from the chaff and all that nonsense. Okay, so what's that got to do with standing up to people, keeping them in line? This is where I stand up to you, my friend. What are you talking about? I know you hate me, Jimmy boy. I know you said all that stuff about me behind my back. What are you talking about? Don't play innocent with me. You want to run this school? I want to run this school. Only one of us is going to make it. And it's going to be me! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and morons, I give you... Russell! Oh, man. Me, Russell! Gary, now I hate you. I know. Russell, go beat that little jerk who said that nasty stuff to me about your mom and those barnyard oh. animals. What? Come here. Russell wants vengeance. So he's paranoid about Jimmy, and he states that Jimmy hates him and has said stuff behind his back. He also believes that Jimmy wants to run the school as well. And Gary has lied to Russell, which is why Russell wants to fight and beat up Jimmy. Not only that, one of the previous missions involved you beating up some bullies, which probably did not help considering Russell is the leader of the bully clique. Gary then insults Jimmy before walking off. His goal was to likely humiliate Jimmy in front of all the other clique leaders. However, Jimmy managed to beat Russell in the end. After this point, Gary influences a few missions, as well as staying in the background are being hinted at to be spreading lies, insults or rumours about Jimmy. Now I'll just show any sort of influence Gary may have in the story after this point. If it's something relatively minor, I probably won't really comment on it, but if it's something of significance, I will, you know, pause the clip and talk whenever is necessary. Now before I continue, I'll introduce a new clique. These are the townies who are dropouts, people who are expelled, or people that dislike Bullworth Academy for one reason or another. They have been contacted and influenced by Gary. This leads them to cause events that directly affect each school clique. This then leads to distrust by the cliques as Jimmy promised peace between the cliques. Yet they have been attacked and so they feel that either Jimmy or one of their rival cliques are responsible for this. Either way, they don't trust Jimmy anymore due to these events. No, I'm Pinky, but I know all about you. Everybody's talking about you. Everybody says that you're mean and angry and you like fighting. Huh. Gary said you're so mad because you're sexually confused. Yeah, well, Gary talks a lot of crap. Oh, I know. I don't like him. Smashing. Now tell me, Hopkins, is it true you said I was inbred? No, because First Cousins is legal, my friend. Legal. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and just because my elder brother doesn't have a chin and ended up in a lunatic asylum, it doesn't mean anything. Whatever, Tad. Your family is your business. Don't lie, Jimmy. You said Tad was probably a hermaphrodite with that much inbreeding. A hermaphro what? Don't act dumb. You said his mom was also legally his aunt and that he probably had webbed toes. I don't. Well, just only on one foot. Tad, you're not going to take that kind of crap from this scumbag, are you? You've... You, you've been rude about mommy. Let's get this, Papa. I guess you want to kill Gary now that he's turned most of school against you and got those rich kids to throw eggs at you. Gary will get what's coming to him. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Well, you're sitting around watching TV by yourself like a loser. Someone crap in your bed? What's wrong? Well, for one moment, I had friends. Just one moment. You and Gary. Yeah, Gary's a snake, and you're a psychopath. Ah, oh, come you on. You both bullied me mercilessly, but... They picked a fight with me, and I showed them who was boss. And Gary got them to pick that fight, so maybe you'll show him as well. Gary's an even bigger problem. So, um... What about Gary? I haven't seen him, but whenever I hear somebody say I used to be a girl and had a sex change, or that my mother slept with Crabble Snitch to get me in here, I think to myself, Gary! Gary. What a jerk! Oh, man. Jimmy, I need to talk to you about something. Not now, Pete. 
I'm basking in adulation. I mean, running the school fairly. Dude, so fairly. No, Jimmy, please. Pete, enough. Yeah, shut up, Pete. Hey, come on. Wait, Jimmy, don't forget about Gary. Wait, wait for me. I did it. That's great. Listen, we've got a problem. I'm the king, Petey, the king. Whatever, you're a king with a load of problems. I've only been gone a couple hours. What could have happened? All kinds of things. You remember that promise you made about restoring law and order and improving the school? Let's just say it ain't exactly coming true. Well, if anyone wants a fight, I'm right here. I think Gary must be behind it, but trust me, everyone wants a fight. Listen, I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. Oh, man. This is a disgrace! It's appalling! I don't want play or a pet rat! It's your fault, Jimmy! Huh? What? No, it isn't. What are you guys talking about? The library is full of rats! And I don't believe this! Oh, no! How did it happen? Hopkins, come here, boy! Hey, what's up, Mr. Burton? What's up? What's up? My gym is up in flames! Look! Damn, how'd that happen? As if you don't know, you're a degenerate to think I trusted you! It wasn't me. Yeah, I'm no saint, but I tried to bring order to the school. It was you, Hopkins. Yeah, since you turned up, everything's gone really weird. Someone said they saw a couple of asylum orderlies driving up to his house, but you know how people love to talk. Oh, here he is, Mr. Big. Yeah, it was you, creep. Hey, look, just get to the point. Someone stole our boxing trophies, buddy. Well, if it wasn't you, then who was it? I bet it was those grease balls. I know it. They've always hated us. And so much for peace in our time, Popper. Jo it was those townies. Which townies? The ones who hang out by the factory. Them? Why would they steal our trophies? They did everything. Put Johnny Vincent in the home, let the rats out of the library, everything, including your trophies. Why? Because I listened to Gary. So it is your fault. No, it was Gary's fault. You, my friend, have got delusions of grandeur. Nobody cares about you or Gary. You're ridiculous. Yes, you are without a doubt the least popular boy in the school right now. Coincidentally, it has also come to my attention that you are a filthy, dirty, foul-mouthed, awful little vandal. You painted obscene graffiti on the town hall, boy. I have it on good authority it was you. A commendable pupil did feel the need to tell me you were responsible for this outrage. Gary Smith! Look, I may have painted a few jokes on the town hall, but that kid likes to torture people. Gary Smith is the next head of this school. He's responsible, courteous, and not afraid of being an unpopular leader. You are blind, old man, blind. And you are leaving. People used to be scared of me, and now I'm a joke. It was Gary. It must have been. I know. I can't deal with the fact that that kid beat me. Well, it ain't over yet. We gotta prove Gary was behind everything. We don't even know if it was Gary. All we know is townie kids beat up a bunch of Bullworth kids. I mean, I don't even care anymore. Well, we've got to find out what's going on. Come on. Okay, but if we're gonna take on those townies, we're gonna need a bunch of backup. Someone big who doesn't hate me yet. Russell. Russell. That's what I thought! Now, what made you think it was a good idea in the first place? Aw, oh, man. I hate that school. My parents couldn't afford to send me there, and now I'm stuck in this dump of a town. Gary said we'd make them all pay. Wait a second. Gary? That backstabbing, two-faced sociopath put you up to this? Ah. I bet he said the two of you would take over the school or some crap. Hey, how'd you know? Because he told me the same garbage. Didn't do me any good either. Come on. You're gonna help me make him pay for his lies. So after being expelled, Jimmy decides to go and deal with the tiny cliques. He goes to them, he beats their leader, and it's revealed that Gary convinced the townies with the same story about taking over the school. Jimmy recruits the townies and they go to school where there's a riot going on between the cliques. Jimmy and the rest subdue every single clique before the final showdown. Moron! Why'd you do it, Gary? Why not? I won! I tricked everyone! Starting with you, the head, the loser kids in town, and the prefects. Me! I won! You are sad, man. I might be sad, but I've won your world, moron. And don't you forget it. You did all my dirty work for me, Hopkins. You're like a puppet, only dumber. Whatever. Let's finish this. The thing is, if I win, you're just another punk. 
you win, and you'll be sent away even quicker for beating up the head boy. Why'd you do it, Gary? Because I can. Because making little people like you and the morons who run this place eat out of the palm of my hand feels great. But I never did anything to you. You would have if I'd given you the chance. Face it, I'm smarter than you. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> You're smarter than me. You hate everyone, and everyone hates you. Genius! The head likes me. I tied him up, turned his dumb school into a battleground, got kids expelled unfairly, put several others into therapy, and he still likes me! You're such a loser! <laughs> well, at least my mom doesn't make her living on her back! You're dead! <laughs> no! Smith! I heard the whole thing! You're expelled! So as you can see from this point, Gary betrayed Jimmy so he could take over the school and because he liked the conflict as well, as Gary avoids direct one-to-one -one confrontations until the end of the game where he is unable to hide behind any of the colleagues or persuade them as they are either beaten or on Jimmy's side. So in summary, who did Gary betray? He mainly betrayed Jimmy and Pete. Why did he betray them? He was paranoid that Jimmy would want to take over the school or he could have just liked the general idea of chaos. He may have had a range of conditions, as his actions are not normal for a school kid. He doesn't have a single friend the entire game, as he antagonizes everyone, and he doesn't view anyone as his actual friend. Gary prefers to spread lies and get other people to do his dirty work, as seen by how he can convince cliques to fight as well as deceive them. Like I said before, he only confronts you personally at the end, where he has no one to hide behind, and when he feels that he has won. That's the end of my analysis. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them and I will likely read them. Subscribe if you haven't already.